Hi, this is Tomoko Iwaka, and welcome to Global Perspectives. By the middle of this week, the Fed Fund's futures market had already given a 100% chance that the Fed would raise rates by 25 basis points next week. The long-term Treasury yield also went up uh, to its highest level since the beginning of this year to around 2.6%, and it started to affect the international bond yields too. The focus in the foreign exchange market has shifted from short-term interest rates to the longer-term interest rates. So in Europe, the 10-year Bund yields have gone up in the same magnitude as the U.S. Treasury yield has. This is because there are some hawks already within the ECB that are calling for an end to the quantitative easing sooner than later. The Eurozone's inflation rate is already at the targeted 2% level, and given that the ECB's mandate is only to control inflation, this is somewhat justified. Consequently, the European interest rates in the shorter end have been unchanged. However, the inflation expectation is embedded in the bond yields. Meanwhile, in Japan, the JGB, the Japanese government bond yields, are also trying to rise but have been suppressed. Japan also is experiencing a pickup in the inflationary pressures with the cheap yen and rising oil prices. However, what's stopping the JGB yields from rising is precisely because of the Bank of Japan's monetary policy of targeting 10-year JGB yields close to 0%. So every time when the JGB yields tries to rise, the Bank of Japan is there to buy the Japanese government bonds. My view. Given that the 10-year bunt yields have risen faster than the Japanese government bond yields, this explains why the yen has been cheaper or weaker than the euro. This trend will probably continue until the Bank of Japan loosens its grip and allows a further steepening of their yield curve. Until then, I believe that the trend of a weaker yen in comparison to the euro will continue. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend.